Hey guys, thanks for tuning in with Alma Mint Desserts. Today we're going to be bringing you something very fun, unique, and everybody knows who she is, but I'm gonna do a drum roll. That was a really bad drum roll. Uh, today we're making the Selena Como La Flor cake. So everybody in the Latin community, Hispanic community knows who she is. And I'm pretty sure majority of the people who live in this world know who she is. And if you don't, Google her please because she is a big inspiration for all of us. Um, she was a role model. Unfortunately, she passed away at a very young age, but we're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the, the basically the cake that we're doing today and it's going to be so pretty and you guys are going to know. I'm super excited because I mean you can see my face. I'm super excited and I'm talking too fast. But <laughs> it's gonna be really fun and unique and so pretty and it's just really you can do this at home and everything like that so don't forget stay tuned cuz we're gonna be doing it. okay I'm gonna stop all right guys so let's start with our Selena Como La Flor cake and so what inspired me was her outfit that she had at the Amsterdam and I wanted to create her outfit which is a purple glittery one um, and I also wanted to <laughs> do a purple um, cake, but since this is vegan, um, sometimes the colors doesn't come out as great, when, especially when it's powder, um, to color it like a natural base. So I used a blueberry uh, powder um, that I got on Amazon, and it worked really well. It tastes like blueberry cake, but um, as I said before, the color is just not as vi vibrant. Um, because it is more of a natural base um, color dye, so that is why you can see the you don't see the color like the purple or the blue. So it's more of a like just a brown kind of thing. But trust me, it's really good. <laughs> anyway, so um, as I said in other videos, if you have no idea how to cut or tort or crumb coat any of the cakes that you see here, I will link a. Um, description or I will description on the box below I will link the video where you know or how how you can learn how to do all of that um, and that way uh, this is more of a cake art form so of course I'm gonna fast forward a lot of the videos here but uh, if you like I said if you want to learn I will have that link below and you can go ahead and click on it before you even begin with this cake art
Once we're done with our crumb coating, we are going to put it in the freeze for at least 10 to 15 minutes so that the crumbs can stick to the cake. And when you are adding your second layer, you would not have any of those crumbs on your second layer. And that's something that you do not want to have because it's a pain in the butt <laughs> if you have those um, on your second layer of uh, buttercream. So, of course, this is your second layer and we are going to cover it up as much as possible. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but as long as that you can't see through the cake, to basically to your crumb coat, uh, it's good. But don't worry because it is gonna be covered in glitter, so it doesn't really matter too much of how little or how much you add to your crumb coat. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Once we are done with our final coat, we are going to put this back in the freezer for at least 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, until you get a very hard cold and you don't see on my finger, as you can see there, no buttercream whatsoever. So let's have fun, let's get started. So you have two types of paint brushes, one for your piping gel and then one for your glitter. So we're going to add our piping gel first because it's going to stick to the cake, or I'm sorry, it's going to add our glitter to our cake because that way it's going to stick. So we're going to add only little by little. So when you add a lot of piping gel, you it's just going to be so thick and it's just you're going to be adding way too much glitter. I mean, we're already adding enough glitter by itself, but when you're adding a lot more piping gel and it's not smoothed out or evened out, you're basically just getting like all your glitter into like one spot. I hope that makes sense, but we want a very thin layer of our piping gel. Um, that way that when you are adding the glitter, it's going to even out. So we're going to do this all the way through. Okay, since we already applied our piping gel, let's have fun with our awesome glitter. I love glitter. So we're gonna start from the bottom all the way to the top. So you're gonna grab a little bit and you're going to smooth it all up. So you're gonna brush it up from the bottom to the top. So obviously you can see here, it didn't go all the way onto the cake. But when you're doing glitter cakes, you're gonna be taking a lot of glitter in but yeah, you're gonna save a lot as well. I hope that makes sense. But when I'm doing something like this, I have a piece of parchment paper or wax paper and I put it in a in-depth uh, pan so it does, does capture all the glitter that is coming off from the cake. And so whatever glitter I have left over, by the end of my finished product, I just uh, put it back into the bottle until, next, until I have another project that involves with the glitter. So. From here, I am going to cover the entire cake in glitter, and the thing about it is it is non-toxic, but as cake designers, um, we don't recommend having you guys eat this. Even though that it is non-toxic, it's still, you can't really um, absorb or digest <laughs> glitter. Um, so we always recommend our customers and clients that um, if you guys want this, just take off the glitter and then just inside, just eat, eat the cake basically. So it's more of a design um, aspect of it instead of just eating it in a, in a way. Um, but this is up to you of course. But I always suggest don't, don't eat glitter. <laughs> um, so I, I always say that. But yeah, so basically what you can see here is that we have covered it up in tired glitter. And you can see like like spots 
that are missing of it. So don't worry about it. It's because just it's the way that the piping gel is absorbing it. Um, but you can always go back and just do like final touches to it, add more glitter to it, um, et cetera, et cetera. And if not, you guys can just leave it as is. So that's totally up to you. But once you guys have done that, you're going to get a very nice, clean cake board to make it look very nice. And you're just going to set it. And that's basically what uh, what our cakes are all about, is just to have a very nice presentation. So this is where, where we stand. So of course, you look for the spots that are missing, and you're going to fill it in with the glitter. I don't know how many times I'm going to be saying glitter, but I got to tell you, I love glitter, so I can't help it. <laughs> so to finish our product, our Selena cake, we're going to add a flower. So of course, this como la canción is como la flor. Well, we created a open rose wafer paper, and this is also going to be linked on the link below, and I will teach you how to make this flower. So that is it, you guys. This is our como la flor by Selena inspired cake. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Until next time. And there you guys have it. Our Selena Como La Flor inspired cake from her outfit, her nice beautiful glittery outfit that everybody loves and knows. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just gonna be dancing because I'm dancing to her music, but you know, it is what it is. But anyways, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it as well. You can do this at home, celebrate, dance, you know, cumbia, merengue, whatever you guys want to do. But anyways, uh, until next time, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and like our video and share it. So until next time, guys, ciao.